Good morning and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Clinton Griffiths. Well, some of the most important work that's done here at the Lahoma Research Station is on wheat and wheat variety trials. So we thought, what better chance would we have to sit down and talk to some of the state's experts than here at the Lahoma Field Day? So today we've dedicated the entire show to wheat producers and wheat. Year after year, the OSU Wheat Improvement Team plants thousands of acres of test plots around the state, all in an effort to find the next great variety. The variety that pushes the yield curve is disease and drought tolerant, resists pests, or is suitable for both grazing and grain. And that success is paying off. <laughs> OSU recently received a royalty check for more than $150,000 for varieties already in the field, money that will be put right back into the ground in the form of new research. Endurance has been in a field setting since 1994. Leading that team is Brett Carver, the OSU Wheat Genetics Chair, and he agreed to take SUNUP on a tour of the Lahoma Wheat Variety Trials. Well, Brett, there's a lot of different varieties out there that uh, producers can consider. Let's start here with OK Bullet. How's that faring through the spring? Uh, talk a little bit about this variety. OK Bullet did fairly well. It's an earlier maturing variety, so typically those earlier maturing varieties uh, got, what I would say, pinched by the freeze. And, and a lot of heads did not develop like they should have or normally would have. But Bullet, uh, on, as, as a whole, did quite well this year. Yeah. Uh, did better than average, right. I think. The one thing I'm concerned about Bullet is, is leaf rust we're starting to see on the leaves. Right. And that will, that will uh, rob some of its yield potential, particularly in this part of the state, north central Oklahoma. Have we seen that uh, leaf rust on it before, or is it? Gradually. gradually. Uh, this year, perhaps more than, than last. So I, I think that uh, we, we do need to start thinking of other alternatives. Our folks in the southwestern part of the state, maybe in the Panhandle, may not need to think so hard about it because Bullet is doing just fine without so much rust uh, infection in that, those areas of the state. But in this heart of the wheat belt, north central Oklahoma, where we're getting more rust, leaf rust that is, we do need to start thinking of other alternatives. And there are plenty of them out there. Sure there, sure. Uh, one of alternative maybe duster here? Exactly. Uh, Bullet was a release from 2005. The next year we followed up with duster, very different genetics in duster, different uh, background parentages. Nothing that I would say is something that the wheat producer is going to recognize. There are about four parents that went in to make Duster. Right. Duster is a very unusual variety in that it has, it has been an older variety in our program. We actually started out with it as an experimental line in 1993. Wow. As a donation from Pioneer, the Pioneer Hardware Winter Wheat Program. Over that time, uh, Dr. Bob Hunger, myself, Dr. Smith, my predecessor, we worked with this line to clean it up, purify it, make it better. Yeah. And, and we finally did, I think, in 2006, and we're seeing, I think, the results of it in our variety trials. Uh, ever since 2006, we had very different environments each one of these years, yeah. and every one of those years, it just seems to excel. Yeah. It seems like it's got a really healthy stand in spite of the freeze. Exactly, and, I, and I, I'm at a loss at this point to explain that right now, <laughs> because I just said that later maturing varieties tended to do better yeah. in the freeze. This is not a late maturing variety, certainly not the maturity as endurance. Wow. Although I think overall duster performed better, we'll have to make sure of course when we weigh the, weigh the seed in the end. Right. But I think it actually endured that freeze better. I, I have a good feeling about that because we also have a lot of breeding material with duster as a parentage, as a parent. And those breeding populations we have in other parts of the state really stick out as, as excelling oh, wow. under these conditions. They're not, they're not necessarily later in maturity, but they must be the tillering, it must be something else involved uh, in that ability to recover okay. from the freeze event that we had. There's hardly anything that can take 20 degrees right. for six hours right. when the head is developing well above ground. Right. Weed is not normally considered to be that freeze tolerant. But this seems to be doing pretty It well. seems to recover from it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's talk about a new release now. Uh, this is uh, one that will be out next year for people to use. That's right. And I was just saying that we need to start thinking of other alternatives to bullet. And, and also in that same family as bullet is overly. They're very similar varieties uh, in their genetics, their backgrounds, but also most importantly in their ability to tolerate leaf rust. So Billings was really thought of as, as a possibility, alternative to Bullet and Overly in this part of the state especially. In fact, that's why we named it Billings for the town in north central Oklahoma. Right. This is its center of adaptation. 
-hmm. Although Billy's can go out west in the panhandle under irrigation right. and do quite well. So what makes this unique? What makes this unique is it has different genes for leaf rust resistance. We're not sure exactly what they are. The two that we know are present are effective together. Uh, but we think there's something else involved there because the durability of this rust reaction has been quite, quite good for several years. Another good thing about Billings is the stripe rust resistance. We haven't seen a lot of stripe rust lately, but if we do, I think this is going to tolerate that very well. And two, the yield potential is just um, is up there, if not better than duster. Yeah, great. What, what are you thinking yield potential? Have, have you uh, had any trials with in it? In north central Oklahoma, it's not uncommon in our breeding trials to see a five bushel plus yield improvement over duster with wow. Billings. Wow, significant. Where we, exactly. Where we won't see that improvement is if it's grazed. Okay. If it's grazed, Billings will not come out of that grazing as well as endurance and duster and those kinds of products, and, and bullet for that matter. Okay, so maybe a variety that's used for grain only Let's think about grain production systems only okay. for Billings. I think that's where you're going to see the yield advantage. Okay, another new variety here uh, that actually looks a little funny. It's, it's missing some pieces, some parts. That's right. Yeah, it's <laughs> missing those little prickly things sticking out of the top. And normally, you know, a hard red winter wheat in the Great Plains has what we call beards, or another word for those is awns. Okay. Those awns actually provide... Uh, photosynthetic or food for the developing head and so the idea is if you, if you take away the awns you take away some of that yield potential possibly however with breeding we can we can try to get around that we actually have got around that with yield I think the biggest problem with awnless or beardless wheat is test weight hmm. which is an indicator of flower yield okay so we really have to try hard through a breeding program to select out those better test weight varieties that's what we've done with Pete. That's what we did with Deliver before mm. Pete. Okay. And this is this is simply I consider it an improvement upon Deliver. Great. Uh, what beyond uh, just using it uh, for flour and those kinds of applications? I think you mentioned earlier that it might be uh, good for hay. And exactly. Other yeah. A lot of farmers would like to take this beardless wheat. It, the beards tend to cause some irritation, mouth irritation with cattle that. that uh, consume mm. the head so without that beard you don't have that irritation so it makes really a, a very good quality hay huh. uh, when when the head is present okay so you know if a farmer wanted to use peat for hay he or she could certainly do that but they won't have to make that decision until after they plant the wheat depends on the market conditions oh, right. because this is a wheat variety that can be used just like bullet just like duster just like any other wheat variety that we breed that has to go to the elevator oh. it goes in our market system Peat can go in our market system. We can use it any, can any use which it way we need to. to. That's okay. right, and make that decision in season. I think Roger Gribble, our area agronomist, had a perfect explanation or description of this, kind of a metaphor, and that is it provides us a triple option, right. just like in football. Yeah. You can hand it off, you can pass it, or you can ladder it off, and yeah. you can do that with this variety, Great. three different ways. So we want to look at some uh, trial varieties now. The, yeah. These are some different varieties that you're working on and trying to develop for market. Let's look at this one. Okay, 05526. This is one that I, I'm looking at as a possible improvement upon endurance. Wow. We know endurance has some very good capability in Oklahoma, particularly in a grain, a, a grazing grain, grazing dual purpose grain, situation. Dual purpose. Okay. That's right. Endurance, that is where it, it, it really excels. So we want to maintain that capability, but improve upon the yield potential of endurance. Just keep raising yield up. That's what we have to do. Right. You know, every, every year, you know, we're trying to improve it about half a percent, one percent. I think we're even going beyond that one percent with this really? one. Wow. Yes, definitely. What are you seeing as the yield potential here? Well, if endurance is going to yield 55 bushels, I think anywhere 55 to 60 okay. on this one. Another characteristic that I like about it is its test weight. Mm -hmm. Endurance, if you don't harvest it just at the right time, can lose its test weight possibly more rapidly than other varieties, mm -hmm. this one will not lose its test weight as much. Oh, it holds that, okay. Exactly, holds the test weight. Also, we're not sure just how long that leaf rust resistance and, and endurance is going to last. Right. You know, it's already lasted 15 years. We'd like to think it's gonna last another 15, but we don't need it to last another 15 because we're always gonna have something coming along better. This has some different leaf rust resistance genes actually provided through um, our ARS, Agriculture Research, uh, service partners in the federal government from Kansas. Great.